Howdy there, it's me. Yeah, that's right, I'm back. Can you believe? I know it's been a hot minute since I've actually posted anything to this channel. It might also be a hot minute until I post anything else to this channel, but I am back for now and I have a new video. I basically bring into you a video of me making Mimir from God of War, specifically Ragnarok. I decided I wanted to film the process of me making Mimir because I just got an embroidery machine and this was kind of around maybe my third project uh, using that and I was just really excited about the project so I decided to film the process and thought I'd make a video out of it for you guys to enjoy because I have really gotten back into making the log plushies and I would like to make some more so yeah please do enjoy Yee all right so this is the document I basically drew it on procreate and then I put it into Inkscape and I have digitized it ready for embroidery. I'm not actually gonna film too much of this process because it's still fairly new to me. Actually like a really detailed face which for my third project on the embroidery machine was rather ambitious I must say um, and it's actually my second plushy face. My first plushy face was Sean Maguire from Red Dead Redemption. I just went straight for hard mode with Mimir because I have wanted to make this plushy ever since I got the embroidery machine. I knew this was one of the first projects I wanted to do with it just because his eyes are so very interesting and it did take five attempts. These different layers for the different colors. My machine only has one color per go. Remove all of the layers, you can see the back. Looks a bit weird, Bruh. doesn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, the Mimir has a lot of runes. Doing this takes like a couple of days. It's so uh, mind boggling and overwhelming. So I will just cut to when I have done the embroidery. Okay, so these are my patterns. Not much has really changed since last made plushies on YouTube. As you can see, I've already uh, embroidered. These parts I'm gonna actually hand embroider uh, when the head is all together and stuffed. I'm gonna start the back of the head, sew these darts together, sew this piece, and then sew these bits along the side and the outside of the head, and then put them together. He's a little, a little bit flat right now, but the first thing we need to do before we actually stuff him up is uh, I want this Mimir plushie to have glowing eyes. So I have bought, hang on, let me get on. I have bought some fairy lights. I got them from Poundland, so they're probably no good. And they've got this clunky like battery pack on the back of them. But I'm gonna tie that in the knot with the rope um, that will put on his head when he's done. Um, and I'm basically going to cut so gaps here where it's not embroidered. Uh, I'm going to cut those out. Hopefully it'll work. So as you can see, there's a hole. You can see through it. Um, and I found the best way to do this is to pierce no, uh, God, please, with no. this. This sounds and looks horrible, but uh, use the unpicker to pierce like the hole in it um, and sort of tear that fabric that was there in the middle of it and then use these tiny embroidery scissors to uh, no! snip that, that away and then I double check like on both sides of the fabric so there's no like flyaways or anything so that it's nice and neat get 
I've cut out holes in the eyes here. And what I've decided to do, I've got this felt, um, because I've been making it up as I go along. So I make a little incision in the top of the head here, and I'm gonna thread the lights through. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have like a little piece of this felt behind the eye, and I'm gonna like attach the lights to the piece of felt and put that inside the head somehow. How on earth do these get tangled up when I don't touch them? I don't understand. How does this happen? I haven't touched it. What has happened? Oh, right, the end's there. Alright, so these are flying everywhere. They do not want to look still. Mummy looks so sad. Look at him. Had his uh, lights threaded through the top of his head, and I will. Oh, the battery pack is so massive. Because I have to go get a screwdriver because this apparently requires a screwdriver to get in. Why on earth is there a screw? All right, so they're actually quite strong. So as you can see, I've wrapped this uh, wire just around this piece of fabric. When I turn it on, let me just... bye bye. <laughs> right, bye. You can actually see through the back of it quite well as well. Um, but it makes a glowing ball. So I'll put that behind the eye and then I'll make it go over to like the other one. I'll cover up the if there's a light in between. But there's quite a considerable distance between the lights. We have the contraption, um, the two makeshift eyeballs. Okay, so this is the moment of truth. We see what the eyes are like now that they're glued. It would help if I press the switch the right way. Yeah! <sighs> Look! Wow! You know, that works. There's a a couple of lights are uh, glowing in the wrong places, but we can sort that out. That looks pretty damn cool, actually. <laughs> we also have a voice box. I went extra for this plushie. Um, so we're going to record a Mamira voice line on this, and then we can put it inside the head so that when you press him, he'll say a classic Mamira quote. But you're going to have to wait until the end to see what that is. So now I'm going to stuff the head, and we're going to put the voice box inside, and hopefully with it all stuffed it'll start to take shape a bit more he's been like this flat depressed looking skin for ages okay so here he is stuffed he looks a little bit strange because you know just trust the process, isn't it? So these are the ears. I'm just gonna sew them on the machine. And yeah, then I'll probably sew them directly onto the head. Here he is with the ears. He's coming together. Fun part. The fur. I'm so excited about this fur. It's so soft. Um, it's the perfect colour. Put like little bits over here. Uh, I've coloured in some washes gold because he's got these like, because I'm doing the Ragnarok version, he's got like plaits in the Ragnarok version. He's got these like little rings. So it's not gonna be like perfect birds of plushie, so. <laughs> um, and then I've got these, these were for like clasps for chokers and stuff. I've got them for like these little rings cause I'm not really sure where I'd get something like that. I'm working with things I already have in my house. bit of a uh, fabric. I'm basically like gonna car around his face. Uh, you can see his mouth. Hi, how are you? <laughs> um, and I've got his moustache parts, which I will adjust and trim once I've pinned it all down onto him. Give him some breathing room. It's not quite even. Uh, it looks a little bit out of control and wild right now. But... 
So I've made this back piece, so the beard has a back to it, and it's not got this horrible backing to it. Obviously, theoretically, there's a neck here. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to make the neck stump or not. I think I might, just because in the references it looks like quite prominent, but I'm going to sew these sides together. So you can't see him in uh, the entire camera view. Got all the details and that pinned on. His beard is not easily braided, so I might have to add a little sneaky layer underneath that's like braided, just for like the main braid. And I will hand sew this on. So we've given him a mirror a little bit of an eyebrow trim, his brows are a little bit out of control, and we've added these clasp things to his moustache. Everything is now sewn on, so his beard, moustache, eyebrows. I have made these plaits, and the rings that I, I coloured them in with a, a metallic pro marker because they were silver, um, but I've plaited some separate strands here to just, and I'm gonna like sneak them under, either sew it in or glue it in there, and then I'll sort of hide it two sort of chunky braids with these eye rings in and then i've got like some little eyelets that i'm gonna put smaller braids in all right so here's the beard um it's not the neatest braided parts it's really hard to braid the faux fur straight from the beard and i didn't really want to make loads and loads of these braids cut out some horns the horns were a little bit tricky because I didn't know whether to do them like gold or black with gold detailing because they are really detailed. I was going to embroider them but don't really have any like gold thread so I have gold fabric so I'm going to sew these and then cover them in pieces of gold fabric to make them look detailed but not as detailed as the reference because that is crazy. I've got this golden felt fabric that I'm gonna stick on, and I also have some golden PVC um, plastic fabric. Got a lot of these gold pieces. I'm gonna cut all these circles out to look more like this uh, donut shape, um, and I'm gonna glue these down onto horns. So here are the horns. They are not perfect by any means, but they will do the job to portray the sort of style. We're nearly done with this project now. I need to hand sew on some more runes. I think I'm just going to throw in random ones. I'm not going to follow the reference because it's really hard to figure out what's going on. And then I'm going to actually give him a neck if he doesn't have his neck stump. I won't be able to say there's frost in his neck stump while I have him on my belt. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a silly reason, but it, it's a reason nonetheless. We've got this rope that I got from the works. I got it for my stool display. I will use it to make mirrors so I can actually have him attached to my belt because I want to take him to events. I have finished the runes, you can't see them from this angle. Here they are, I have signed them on. They're a bit thinner, I had to double it up, I had to go over the lines twice. And I was too lazy to do it three times because I had a lot more runes than I thought that I had to do. A lot of the rope will be covering this anyway, so I just wanted to give the general effect. So these are the pieces for the neck. I'm just gonna sew these two sides together and then one the bottom side to this bit. All right, there we go. There is the neck. <laughs> and sew this bad boy on.
Okay, so Mimir himself is technically finished. We just need to add the rope. The neck will actually help <laughs> that I've just added in to attach the rope. And I'm also going to so tie the knot around this because this has been in my way for the majority of making this. Hide this, but also make it so that we'll be able to change the batteries if the batteries run out. Oh God, this is really confusing how to start this. Let's just go for it. Where's the, we want the middle. Right. The middle is now tied around that. <laughs> do, let's do that. That looks right. <laughs> oh, we'll do that and then it goes around like that. Well, <laughs> that'll be fine. We'll do that. Uh, what have we got going on here? What have I done? Oh, I see the problem. It's not hooking. Right, one second. I'll do is I'll tie it here, maybe. So that, that will... Oh, I've got this wet battery back. Pain in the ass. Right, if I do this, and then I tie it... Ooh! <laughs> Slight off my bit. Stick it through here. And then that should help keep it in place. Bits of beard just scattered around this uh, workstation. Right, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. That works. Right. I don't, I don't know a single thing about that. Man, the ice cream van just rocked off. I could absolutely murder an ice cream right now. Yep. That looks right. I mean, I, I'm trying to do it as accurate as possible, but. Sure. <laughs> Fingers and thumbs. Uh, right, put that in the middle. It's obviously not going to be identical to what it's like in the game, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. There's the mod. Uh. Right, so this is it. This is the finished Mamira plushie. Uh, I will now reveal what he says. Well, this is a fine mess. Choose, well, this is a fine mess is the next voice line. I was originally going to choose careful brother, you're covered in Bifrost because that's something I say all the time. But the only like audios I could find of that had like sounds of Kratos like fighting and grunting um halfway through like it sounds of like his axe and the enemies and stuff it just sounded very crusty so i went for this voice line instead it's another good golden mimir voice line there's loads to choose from but this is the one i settled on i'm overall really really happy with how he came out for my second plushie embroidery project i am just I'm just so happy. I'm really happy I bought this machine and I'm very, very excited to take him to events, have him on my belt and have probably a very small handful of people understand um, the reference there. So I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me make him. I hope you enjoyed this like return to YouTube. Going forwards, uh, please expect more video games because I'm not gonna lie to you, I haven't watched anime in well over a year and I'm not really that much like into watching it anymore. So likeliness the characters in that i make nowadays will be from games i'm not going to be uploading regularly but if i think of a video idea i'll make it and i'll
upload it. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I really hope that you like how we come out. And fellow God of War fans, drop your favorite character in the comments because you know there's a great cast and the games are great. So feel free to talk with me about them in the comment section. Well, that's not plain mess.